All right, this video is going to show you how to get the answer to a subtraction question of whole numbers uh, using the empty number line. And what's really cool about this method is the idea is if students are struggling with this standard algorithm, and while you are continuing as a teacher, uh, helping the students try and learn the standard algorithm, you can um, let students use this empty number line method so that they can continue feeling successful, they can continue getting the right answer, and they can still be making progress with the rest of their peers, even while you're kind of pulling them aside on, uh, during stations or whatever to show them the standard algorithm. Just because students are struggling with the standard algorithm doesn't mean they can't make progress in other ways. The empty, empty number line is one way to do that. Let, let me show you how to do it. So the whole basis of using the empty number line for a subtraction question is to think of the subtraction question, in this case, let's say 143 minus 58, to think of that question as really an addition problem with a missing add-end. All right, so in this case, it would be 58 plus what gives us 143. And every subtraction problem can be thought of as an addition problem with a missing addend. And now what we're going to do is we're going to use an, a number line, an empty number line is what they call it, to record our, our thinking. So we're going to start on that empty number line with 58 way down to the left and 143 way over on the right. Now the reason why this is called an empty number line is we are not going to ask our students to draw things in a proportional manner. Um, we can see that this distance is quite large, you know, from 58 to 143, but we're not going to count the individual things proportionally. We're just going to use an empty number line to record our thinking. And what we want our students to do is figure out how many hops now, individual hops would be, would be hops of 1, right? We could do a hop of 1 to 58, 59. I mean, we're at 58, so a hop of 1 would be 59. A hop of 1 would be 60, 61, 62, 63. And we're going to count all the individual hops. But we can take bigger hops to make our thinking a little bit easier and quicker. For example, I can do a hop of 2. And where is that going to put me? That's going to put me at 60, because that's a nice benchmark number. Now from 60, oh, if I wanted to, I could do any number of hops, but I'm going to do a hop to kind of speed this along, because I'm thinking, I'm imagining my audience right now is adults who are looking to, for advice on how to teach kids some neat strategies for subtraction. So my next hop is going to be a 40, right? So I'm going to go... And that's going to put me at 100. All right. Now my next hop, what is my next hop? Oh, in my case, I think I would do another 40. Because that's going to put me at 140. And then my last hop is going to be a 3. And so to get the answer to our missing add end, I'm going to take all of these numbers and add them up. And I can do this in my head. 40 plus 40 is 80, 2 plus 3 is 5, so the answer is 85. So what's our answer to 143 minus 58? And the answer is 85. So one last example, let's do 100, uh, 536 minus 178. And again, we're going to think of this as an addition problem with a missing add end. And so the addition problem would be 178 plus what gives us 536, okay? And so we're going to record this thinking again on the number line, empty number line. And so we're going to draw it down here. Students love this because what's really kind of cool about this is the number of hops and the way the students do their hopping uh, can be different for each kid. They can customize their own preferred way of going about their business, right? And I'm going to see if I can show you that in a little bit. So we're going to do our hops. Now let's record our hops, and we're going to count the number of hops it takes, like bunny rabbits, to go from 178 all the way to 536. But we don't have to do it in just one big old leap. 
because we actually don't know the leap. That's the answer, right? So let's do it in a bunch of little steps. So let's start by going, okay, a hop of two. And that's going to give me a nice benchmark number of 180. So I think now I'm going to do a hop of 20. And that's going to give me 200. Now, parents and teachers, this is why it's called the empty number line, because if this is a hop of two, technically 20 would be a really big hop. But we're not going to try and make our hops proportional. We don't worry about it. That's why it's called an empty number line. So now that we're at 200, I'm going to see, hmm, I'm going to get as close. Oh, I think I'll do, oh, let's do a big old hop of 300. And that's going to put me at 500. Now, because I think I can do this, I'm going to do this one big old hop, 36. I don't think a lot of third graders or second graders would do uh, a big hop like this as their last step of 36. They, they often do a hop of 30 and then a hop of 6. It's totally up to you guys. Uh, kids get to choose what's comfortable with them. Now we know that the answer of our missing add end is these numbers added up. So I, for the sake of uh, the adult audience, I'm going to make this go a little bit quicker. So 300 plus 20 is 320. 320 plus 30 is 350. And then 6 plus 2 is 8. So the answer is 358. And so the subtraction answer is 358. Now, what the kind of a cool thing is students, this is not the only number line that is possible. We could get the answer in a different way, and that's what's really cool about the empty number line is uh, students let students explore all the different ways that they want to try and get the answer. So another way they, a student could show the answer is they, a student could say, well, I'm going to go 100. That's going to put me at 278. I'm going to do another 100. That's going to put me at 378. I'm going to do another 100. That's going to put me at 478. Well, I can't do any more hundreds because that would put me past 536. But I think I can do, oh, let's do uh, 50. So if I add 50, all right, so that's going to put me at 478, 450, uh, 488, 498, 508, <laughs> 518, 528. Okay, so that's going to put me at 528. Boy, now I'm getting a little confused. So I'm going to do some babies. I'm going to go 2. That's going to put me at 530. And then I'm going to put 6. And that finally gets me to my destination of 536. And now, now let's add. And boy, this is pretty easy. 100 plus 100 plus 100 is 30. Plus 50 is 350. And then plus 8 is 358. So the answer is 358. And that's what we knew all along. But I just wanted to show you that students can choose their, their hops. Whatever is comfortable for them, let them do it. As long as they're doing it correct correctly, uh, let them choose how they're going to do their hops. And that wraps up the empty number line.